answer, frosty wind made moan. Earth stood hard as iron, water like a stone. Snow had fallen, snow on snow, snow on snow. In the bleak midwinter, long ago. Good morning. Happy New Year to you. Welcome to Pilgrim Congregational United Church of Christ here in Lansing, Michigan. This is January 1st of 2023. Got to get used to that now. The first day and the first Sunday of the new year. Uh, we are still in the church season of Christmas. Uh, that is the 12 days of Christmas and this is the eighth day of Christmas. Uh, and we are five days away from the season of Epiphany. And uh, Tammy has already noted to us that the eighth day is maids of milking. Eight maids of milking. But uh, for the official calendar, uh, the eighth day of Christmas is designated as the day Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem. Okay, today our scriptures are the visitation of the wise men and King Herod's reaction, which is called the slaughter of the innocents. We do not only live in a world where babies are born with the hope of new life, but also there are King Herods who kill to advance themselves. Well, may God bless our worship today. And now we have some announcements. Happy New Year. Here are some announcements from Pilgrim on this January 1st, 2023. If you missed any of our Advent or Christmas services, please check out Pilgrim's Facebook, Pilgrim's website, or YouTube. Last week was Craig Jones' official last Sunday with us, but we have a new video and audio technology expert, Dakota Poor, who is with us this morning. Welcome, Dakota. Pastor Peter will be leading the Vespers service at Bircham Hills this afternoon at 4 p.m. Visitors are welcome. Our annual congregational meeting is scheduled for Saturday, January 28th at 10 a.m. We are trying to set up a hybrid meeting for people to be present in the building and also on Zoom. The small children's clothes closet and love layout program are still looking for donations. The workers of the closet want to thank those of you who have already contributed clothing in response to this appeal. If you want to contribute more, you can find the request list in Pilgrim's newsletter, and you can also pick up the list on the table in the hallway. Thank you for those of you who donated socks. They were delivered to Peace Brethren Church, which distributes socks at their Loads of Love ministry. Just a reminder, the church office will be closed tomorrow, January 2nd. Today, as it is a communion Sunday, we will be taking up an offering for the discretionary fund. There are envelopes in the pews, and these can be put in the basket in the hallway. The executive ministry team appreciates very much your continued support to the work of Pilgrim Church through your offerings and pledges. Now let's take time to greet one another with the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. together. 
Holy God, we praise and thank you for sending your Son to bring light to the dark corners of this world. We pray for your light to be revealed to all who cannot see your revelation because they are afraid or in pain or hard of heart. May your light continue to banish the darkness of our self-will and self-centeredness. Shine on us the healing power of your love and grace. You are the source of all light and warmth in the spirit. Bless us that our hearts may be opened and we made one in Christ. Amen. Now we light the Christmas candles. We light the candles of hope, peace, joy, love, and the Christ candle. Let us pray. Christ, you are the light of the world. You shine in our hearts. You bring us hope and you bring us healing as we wait on your word and believe in your grace. Amen. We welcome Jesus, having come in, in down to us as a child to save the world. <coughs> are falling, hearts are breaking, how we need to hear from God. You've been promised, we've been waiting, welcome holy child, welcome holy child. Hope that you don't mind our how I wish we would have known, but long awaited, holy stranger, make yourself at home, please make yourself at home. Bid our hungry souls be filled. We're now breaking heaven's silence. Welcome to our world. Welcome to our world. May those who are able please stand and join me in the call to worship. We come seeking Christ as the wise man sought him long ago. God, God sent a sign to guide them on their way. way. We too look for God's sign to guide us. The Herods of the world seek to destroy any threat to their power. In a world of deceitful power, the light of God's love shines in Christ. God calls us to share a communion of mutual respect and care. We are called to Christ's table to share in the fellowship and spirit of God. Please remain standing and let us pray together. Eternal God, at times it is difficult to live faithfully practicing justice and peace. There is corruption in the world, 
with with power power hungry hungry people seeking to oppress others for their their own own benefit. You You have have called us to serve you in the world, world, which you have have trusted to our care and and keeping. Send your Holy Spirit on us, that that we may serve you with honor and faithfulness. Help us to be diligent in our duties, that your church may prosper in the mission you place before us. May our example prove worthy for others to follow as we are united in Christ's ministry to the glory of your name. Amen. We Three Kings refers to the wise men who came from the east following a star to pay homage to the Christ child. They brought gifts which were fit for a king. Number 27, verses 1, 2, and 5. But Jesus was no ordinary king. Herod tried to deceive the wise men into revealing the new king's location, but God warned them and frustrated Herod's plan to kill the threat to his throne. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi came from east to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born corn, king of the Jews? For we have observed his star in the east and come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him, and calling together for all chiefs, priests, and scribes of the peoples. He inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, For so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is the shepherd, my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi 
and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star they had seen in the east, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. I'm going to do the Coventry Carol on the Clavinova. It's a, a theme and variations, and keep listening because there is, there is a verse out of it that is the funeral dirge for the children that Herod was responsible for killing. Now let us prepare for sharing communion. All are welcome to participate. We at Pilgrim Church believe that God's grace is for all. Communion connects us with God and other believers in a symbolic heavenly meal. Through this meal, we are reminded of Christ's sacrifice for us and that we are all connected in the spirit of God. Through this sacrament, God imparts grace to us. May you all be blessed by this meal. As we celebrate Christ's birth, we remember his life and his sacrifice on our behalf. By sharing this meal, God binds us all together in love and grace. Let us remember Jesus' words at the Last Supper. Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks to God, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup of blessing and after saying thanks to God, gave it to his disciples, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Let us pray. Dear God, we remember how Jesus gave himself as a sacrifice, the bread representing his body, the grape juice representing his blood. We ask you to bless this bread and the contents of these cups that we were about to receive. We join in fellowship with you and one another in this sacred meal. Amen. All right, for everyone who wishes to take communion, please take a piece of bread, and when you are ready, go ahead and eat it. This symbolizes your individual relationship with God. And then we'll pass around the cups. Take one and please hold on to it. And when I see that everyone has a cup, we will all drink together. We take the bread to remember Christ's broken body to make us whole. And now we drink the blood of Christ represented in this cup. He gave his life so that we may have life. Take and drink. Let us give thanks for the love of God. God of new life, with joy we have received this sacrament, giving you thanks for Jesus Christ, our peace and our hope. Guide us with courage and faith to do your will. Unite us with your followers throughout the world in spreading the good news of your love. May we be your devoted servants so that your kingdom may come to the earth. We dedicate ourselves to serving you. Through your spirit, strengthen us to be faithful to your calling every day. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Noel means Christmas. We sing about the first Christmas with the angels and shepherds. A star announced the Christ's birth and led the wise men to where Jesus was. The first Noel, number 25, and the first three verses. <clears throat>
child and gave him gifts. God warned them in a dream not to return to Herod, and they set off for their own countries. An angel also warned Joseph about Herod's plan to kill Jesus and told him to escape with Mary and the child to Egypt. Herod did not know that the child had left, and he ordered the murder of the children of Bethlehem. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 13 through 23. Now after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night and went to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled because they are no more. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, get up. Take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel, for those who are seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee, there he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called Nazarene. Today, we come upon one of the harshest Bible passages, especially at this time of year. We've just come off celebrating Christmas with sweet baby Jesus, glowing Mary, adoring Joseph, you know, joyous shepherds, singing angels, and even some friendly beasts. Oh, oh let's not forget the uh, reverent and generous wise men. We heard about them in part of our story uh, in the, our today's scripture. But after the wise men leave their gifts with Jesus and begin on their way home, the story usually stops there. And we hear about some you know, theological perspective from the Apostle Paul on the Sunday after Christmas. But the Christmas story is not over with the exit of the wise men. There is still a significant part of the story we do not usually hear about. And I'm referring to the biblical passage called the slaughter of the innocents. Now, after all the warm and fuzzy people and events of Christmas, it's hard for us to accept that King Herod and his murderous cruelty is a part of the Christmas story. But it is. We do not like to read about the more realistic and horrible parts of the Bible, but they are there. 
In the same token, there is a Christmas carol that does not get much playtime. It will pop up now and again, but not very often. Many of you may not have even heard about it. It's called the Coventry Carol, and it is based on our scripture for today. The oldest known copy of the Coventry Carol is from the 16th century, but it probably has much older roots. It was written in Coventry, England, hence its name, and the Coventry Carol was played annually as a part of a traditional performance of the Christmas story based on the book of Matthew chapter 2. The Coventry Carol is a lullaby sung by mothers in Bethlehem for their doomed children. And if you remember in the scriptures, the wise men come from the east because they have seen an occurrence in the heavens which indicates that a king is born in the land of the Jews. These wise men are called magi, and in their religion, they believe that a savior would be born in a foreign land. They come to Judea believing that the child is the savior of the world who will usher in a new age on earth. They set off from their countries and go to the royal palace in Jerusalem. Well, because where else would a king be born but in a palace? They meet King Herod in the palace who is shocked when these foreigners tell him that they have come to pay homage to a newborn king. King Herod consults his wise men who tell him that the prophecy says the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem. Herod intends to kill this threat to his power, but he convinces the foreign wise men that he also wants to worship the new king and ask them to send him word when they find him. King Herod is lying. Wise men go on their way to Bethlehem and somehow they find the child Jesus. They give him gifts fit for a king, fit for a priest, and fit for a prophet. They give him gifts. And then they get a dream, a dream that they should not return to Herod. King Herod learns that they have left without informing him of the child's location, and he is enraged. But he is determined to eliminate this threat to his throne. So he orders his soldiers to kill every child in Bethlehem up to two years old. Joseph is warned in a dream to escape to Egypt with Mary and Jesus before the order can be carried out. But the children who are left behind are slaughtered. What number of children could it have been? Some scholars estimate that the number of children was somewhere between 10 and 20. There are some people who don't believe that the slaughter of the innocents took place at all. They cannot believe it mostly because they can't believe that anyone could be so ruthless, so cruel as to order the death of children, a large number of children. Ancient historians record that King Herod killed actually three of his sons and one of his wives and his mother-in-law because he thought that they were plotting against him. Could Herod have been so morally corrupt as to order the murder of innocent children? Well, he certainly could have. And in modern times, the Nazis of Germany murdered hundreds of thousands of children in gas chambers, labor camps, and extermination and experimentation. Herod is just one despicable tyrant in a long line of despots in history. Now some scholars say the slaughter never happened because the only source that mentions it is the Bible. Even the other gospels do not include it in their accounts. The murder of 10 to 20 children is horrendous, but it might not have been significant enough for ancient historians to write about it, believe it or not. Even the other gospel writers may have had other priorities in their accounts of Jesus, so they didn't include it. Consider the two, uh, that two of the gospels do not even have accounts of Jesus' birth at all. And I'm afraid that the slaughter of the innocents 
is all too real and has happened many times over in history. All right, this brings me back to the, the Christmas carol. For some, the Coventry carol takes place before Herod's order is carried out. The mothers know, however, what is about to happen, and they try to sing their children to sleep. For others, the Coventry carol is sung from the perspective of mothers mourning over their dead children. And the carol has a beautifully haunting tune, which Lynn played just a little while ago. Some of the words are, Herod the king in his raging set forth upon this day. By his decree, no life spare thee, all children young to slay, all children young to slay. Then woe is me, poor child, for thee, and ever mourn and say, for they parting neither say nor sing. Farewell, Lulai, Lule, farewell, Lulai, Lule. Now, of course, there are variations of the words. There is another version, probably the more popular one, which has this as the central verse. Herod the king is raging, charged he hath this day, his men of might in his own sight, all young children to slay. That woe is me, poor child, for thee, and ever mourn and may, for they parting neither say nor sing, Bye-bye, Luli Lule. Now the mystery plays in Coventry went out of style in the late 16th century because Britain had become a Protestant nation and the Coventry plays were seen as too Catholic. There was some renewed local interest in the plays and the Coventry Carol in the early 19th century when the Carol was published in a collection Widespread interest in the carol came, however, when the carol was featured in the BBC's Empire broadcast at Christmas in 1940. The broadcast came shortly after the bombing of Coventry during World War II, and the carol was sung at the conclusion of the broadcast in the bombed-out ruin of the Cathedral of St. Michael. Hitler had personally ordered the bombing of Coventry in November of 1940 in response to the British bombing of several German cities. Coventry had no military bases. It did have some industry, but this bombing and others that followed were revenge bombings meant to demoralize the British people by destroying Coventry. And the Coventry Cathedral of St. Michael was nearly destroyed and its bombed out remains are still present today as a reminder of that vicious bombing. You see, there are still Herods in the world who don't care about innocent children. Get killed in the, innocent children get killed in the process of them, of these other people trying to get power and trying to gain wealth. There is a Herod who rules over Syria. There is a Herod who rules over Russia, who is ordering the deaths of innocent men, women, and children so that he can gain power and territory he desires. The slaughter of the innocents goes on today. And that is why we need to include this Bible passage in our Christmas story from time to time. We need to remember Herod and what kind of world we live in and why the world needs a savior. No, we're not going to put Herod's story in a children's Christmas pageant. We're not going to do that. But we have to remember that there are many people who suffer under the tyranny of modern day Herod. We have plenty of people who suffer from poverty and oppression even when they are not ruled over by a despotic Herod. Even in our own country, there are people who did not have a Merry Christmas with peace and goodwill toward all, and their new year doesn't look very good either. But this is why Jesus was born into this world, 
Jesus was not born into a peaceful world where lowly shepherds rub shoulders with kingly looking wise men and everyone marvels at singing angels. Jesus was not born to give us a time of parties and decorations, gift giving and happy celebrations. Jesus was born to give us a light in the darkness of this world. Jesus came into this world to tell us of God's love and to show us God's love. Jesus came into the world to give us hope, to give our spirits healing. Jesus came into the world to show us how God wants us to live. And he came to give us life in abundance and life everlasting. And if telling the story of tyrannical King Herod helps to remind us of why Jesus was born, lived among us, died for us, then the story of Herod is an important one to tell, at least from time to time. Jesus is more than a cute baby born for us to adore. Jesus is our Lord who lives for us and has a mission for all of us to do for God. So may Christ be born in us, but not only that, may Christ live in us. Amen. Let us be in a spirit of prayer. Let us pray. Dear God, we have just begun a new year. Help us to fulfill our resolutions and renewals. We ask for a renewal of life. We look forward to better times for ourselves and for the whole world. May people seek cooperation rather than conflict. So we may help each other live better lives. May love fill our hearts. Empower us to respect the dignity and worth of your creation and every person. May we lift up the poor in spirit and the poor in what they need. Help us to end poverty of all kinds, including the poverty of peace and goodwill. Show us the way to be the people you want us to be. God, it is a new year and we hope in new possibilities and opportunities. Open our hearts to know your love and grace. Guide us in your ways and give us courage and strength to do what you ask of us. May justice and fairness rule for all people. May respect for one another abound to end prejudice and racism. We need your healing power to mend the, di the divisions in our society and families. We need your healing power upon those who are sick, those who are injured, those who are weighed down with fear and anxiety, and those who have lost someone special to them. May we resolve to promote love and peace. May we resolve to grow in our spirituality and deepen in our devotion to you, O oh God. Make our spirits whole and healthy. Bless us, we pray, O oh God of second and third chances, God of forgiveness, and God of our salvation. By your grace, we are saved, O oh God. By your love, we are empowered to do your will. We come together in spirit and voice to pray our Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. With heart and soul and voice, we celebrate the birth of Christ with Good Christian Friends Rejoice, number nine, all verses. Please rise. Christian. 
Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Give ye heed to what we say. Jesus Christ is born today. Ox and ass before him bow, and he is in the manger now. Christ is born today. Christ is born today. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye hear of endless bliss. Jesus Christ was born for this. He has opened heaven's door, and we are blessed forevermore. Christ was born for this. Christ was born for this. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye need not fear the grave. Jesus Christ was born to save. Calls you one and calls you all to gain his everlasting hall. Christ was born to save. Christ was born to save. May God's grace and love be with you now and forevermore. God's light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And you are a part of that light. You are the light of the world. And may your light so shine before all people that they may see your good works and give glory to God who is in heaven. May the new year be a better year than the years before. May happiness and good health be to us all. God bless you all. Have a happy new year. Amen. Go tell it on the mountain. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. God bless you all. Amen.